A new initiative, Australia's First Families of Wine, will be launched at the Sydney Opera House today. And to tell us more about it now, we're joined by two representatives of these families. Mitchell Taylor is CEO and consultant winemaker at Taylor's Wines in South Australia's Clear Valley. Mitchell, welcome. Thank you, Fran. And Jeff Birch is CEO and owner of Howard Park and Madfish Wines at Margaret River in Western Australia. Hello, Jeff. Welcome, Fran. Um, Mitchell, tough times require tough measures. Is this uh, First Families of Wine venture, is this born of diversity or desperation? No, Fran, it's really a a diversity of some of the the greatest um, wine families and wine regions across the country. And really, we all got together on the idea that we felt that the wine industry was being dumbed down. And there was a lot of um, critical things wrongly accused of being um, seen on the global market as an industrial uh, wine making and making very ordinary wine. Where in fact the truth of the matter is we've got some great gems, some great heritage amongst the families where we make not only the best value uh, wines in the world but we also make some of the greatest wines in the world. So really this group's about getting that message out to the rest of the world. And Mitchell, when you say the Australian wine industry was in being danger of dumbed down, are you saying that's what the world was saying about us? They're only looking at the sort of the price point and that sort of mass wine or that there was a problem within the industry here? There was a little bit of both. I think it was the the point was we've had a lot of success overseas in the last couple of decades, which was great, but we were also being targeted for not bringing out the new innovation. And really it was a lot of our um, big big customers, the big supermarkets in the UK and USA that seem to be selecting some of our wines just on price. James Halliday told us a week or so ago on breakfast that uh, Australian wines have been getting a bit of a shellacking in the USA and in Britain by the wine writers there. Is that what this initiative is about, trying to turn them around and trying to you know, improve the image of our wines overseas? I, I th- that's true. The um, We have taking a bit of a, a few hits with uh, some of the critics, but I think we've been damned by our success. Um, but Australia has a fine wine industry. It has a long history of fine wine. We have great characters. We have great diversity. We have uh, terrific wines that we need to showcase the world. And it needs to start at home. We need Australians to drink Australian wine and be proud of the wine industry that they support. Isn't that happening? Aren't Australians drinking Australian wine? No, there is I only a... ever drink Australian wine. Well... Thank you very much. (laughs) But there is a bit of movement to drink more imported wines and uh, tourists come to Australia, they expect to drink Australian wines and you see quite a lot of restaurant wine lists that uh, are stocking not necessarily a great selection of Australian wines. Okay, but it's a fair point, isn't it, that the uh, the wine critics have made to some extent. I mean, Mitchell, you talked about the, the wines being exported to the UK. There ha- there was um, a medium range, quite a cheap, you could buy a bottle of Australian red very cheaply on the supermarket shelves in London. And uh, did we do ourselves a disservice by not I, promoting ourselves as an elite brand, a premium brand? I think we did in places. And really what we're trying to say is this is good to go in at the entry level because we do make some of the best value wines in the world but Australia's first family of wines is about the step up process and to really all Australians here know that we make some of the best wines in the world but when you get overseas people only think of us as a Yellowtail or a Jacobs Creek. Don't we have a wine board or a trade industry that's supposed to be doing this? Yes we do but we're adding adding the heart and soul to it a bit of colour you know we've got great characters we've got multi-generational families that have been doing this now for Uh, decade upon decade and we make these long-term decisions so that we really do give the benefit on uh, not just for a quick uh, financial reward. We're the people that are the, 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 the quality people of the industry. This group of 12, uh, is there certain benchmarks that have to be met to be a part of that group? Are you presenting yourself as you know, perhaps something akin to the French do when they have the Primum Familiae Vini, something like that? Yes, it's uh, multi-generational, at least um, two generations of family uh, ownership. And it's also, we're talking about our very top iconic wines. But it might not be an exclusive mm. just 12. I mean, we're starting with 12, but it's a, it's a seamless journey. It's a long journey. It's going to take a long time. And so we hope that other family family wine companies will, um, will join us in this quest. Well, what is the journey, guys? What are you going to be doing initially? Um, well, we will start in Australia and we're launching in Australia to, obviously today. Uh, we hope to take this message to the world we'll take it to the States, we'll take it to China. We'll and, take, and what we'll are you going to do there? Uh, How are you going to market um, this? We will, we will 
present wines, characters, stories, the heart and soul of the West Australian wine industry and, and the Australian wine industry. So you and physically, you winemakers will physically go to the United States or Britain? And oh, oh, definitely. I was just last week, I was in the US talking about this concept where we're constantly in, the, in these markets talking to our customers and we'll also be communicating the leadership globally. Australia's seen as this great innovative winemaking country and this group of 12 will be doing the latest cut through things in, in areas like environmental areas. So it's a bit of a wake up call you're trying to get the the wine tasters along to say listen you know that 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 wine the yellowtail is not Australian wine taste this taste that is that what you're Yeah we're going to say yellowtail's a good starting point but we're going to say the real excitement starts when you really get into some of the greatest Rieslings, Semillons of the Hunter Valley, some of the best Shirazes of the Barossa Valley. We're going to talk about the great Cabernets out of Margaret River and Coonawarra. It's going to be a very exciting thing to explore. And are you all putting your money into this? Yes, we're all putting our money into it, but we also see a wider benefit. Um, we see ourselves as custodians of the Australian wine industry. We're all family companies. We have a long-term view of the industry. Yes, there are problems in the industry with some oversupply of grapes that the industry actually didn't want with the MIS schemes. But uh, we're having to deal with that. But that's a short-term blip on, on the horizon. Um, we see ourselves as custodians that will carry this message forward for a long time. Is this acknowledgement that ge the generic branding and, and exporting of Australian wine failed? It, it, it did Maybe it was too successful. Yeah. It did very well at the start, and this is now building the next step onto it because the story's been very keen. It's been bottled in the sunshine, and it's opened us up in the early stages, but now we're saying first families of wine offer more complexity, more interest about the category, so that people don't just move on to another nation like Chile or Argentina. They're actually coming back to Australia to explore all the diversity going forward. And just before I let you go, because uh, James Halliday spoke to us too about problems in the wine industry here, and one of those is oversupply, is a glut. I noticed that uh, Darren Di Bertoli has said that the that uh, basically this glut could last into 2014. Just briefly, Jeff, do we need to downsize? Do we need to get some people out of grape growing? Uh, the downsizing is already happening. Um, there's uh, there's no doubt about that. Across across Australia, there is uh, growers uh, with water shortages and uh, vines that are being taken out of production, and it will come back into balance. Mitchell and Jeff, thanks very much for being with us, and good luck with the sales pitch. Cheers. That's Mitchell Taylor, CEO of Taylor's Wines in the Clare Valley, and Jeff Birch is CEO and owner of Howard Park and Madfish Wines in Margaret River in WA.